with us tonight. Uh, man, what a joy it is to get to serve God. Amen. Amen. Brother Dennis, open us tonight with prayer, please. Amen.
Então. You know, sometimes you hear a song that just, uh, you think, well, that song is me right there. And this is one that I just, when I first heard it, I thought, you know, that's, that's just me in a nutshell. Lonely years, I have lived them. My life had no meaning till I heard about Calvary. Then I knelt down in prayer and the Lord met me there. Now Jesus, he's living in me. He's in my feet when I'm walking in my tongue when I'm talking in my eyes and now I can see he's in the songs that I'm singing in my heart his joy is ringing cause Jesus he's living in me through the valley he has brought me to the top of the mountain and over life's trouble, trouble sea. Now I sing for his glory a song that tells the great story cause Jesus, he's living in me. He's in my feet when I'm walking, in my tongue when I'm talking, in my eyes, and now I can see. He's in the songs that I'm singing, in my heart his joy is ringing, cause Jesus, he's living in me. Yes, my Jesus, he's living in me. All right, if you got your Bibles with you tonight, turn with us to the book of Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. occurred to me that we are <clears throat> here tonight on the last Sunday of 2020. The last Sunday night of 2020. We'll gather one more time in, on Wednesday night before uh, the new year uh, in, in way of, of Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, but tonight's a special night because we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at some stuff from here from Genesis chapter one. I just want you to remain seated tonight because I'm going to be all over the book of Genesis. <clears throat> I'm going to read one verse and then then we're going to pray. And we're going to get into into tonight's message. The Bible says in Genesis one twenty seven, so God created man in His own image, in the image of God created He him. Male and female created he them. Let's pray tonight. Father, Lord, I love you. I thank you and I praise you, God, for another opportunity, Lord, to get to stand and share your word. And tonight, God, I pray, uh, Lord, that you'd give this congregation ears to listen, hearts to obey. Put your thoughts in my mind, your words in my mouth. And God, let me be nothing more than your mouthpiece here in this place tonight. Father God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for anything that may be accomplished in this place tonight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Number one tonight, I, and I've, just, I've got three, three points, but uh, uh, don't get real excited because they're three pretty long points. So uh, Genesis 127, the first thing 
I see here is the wonder of man. The Bible says God created man in his own image. So uh, it, it's awe-inspiring. It's something that is amazing. Human beings are amazing creations. Uh, if, you, if you get to thinking about uh, all of the different nerve, uh, nerves that we have in our body, the nervous system that we have, uh, you know, you can uh, stump your toe and... and you don't ever you don't ever stump your toe and say, "Man, my head don't hurt," right? Because you've got a nervous system that travels and takes that message. And when you stump your toe, I don't know about you, but I hurt all over. Amen. It's amazing to think uh, how amazing the human being is, the the human body is, and uh, it, he goes on in in Genesis two verse seven. If you've got, if you you just keep your Bible open with you tonight because I'm gonna show you some things. When, when we speak about the wonder of man, the Bible says that God created man in his own image, but then in, in Genesis 2, verse 7, it describes that creative act, and the Bible says the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. It, it, tonight, it is amazing that any of us are even here. It's amazing that any of us are even here and able to function at, at the level that we're able to function. And you say, Brother John, I, 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 I get that, you know, birth is a miracle, but it happens every day. So we get, we get used to everything going okay and everything uh, being good in our lives. And, uh, but, y'all, this past week I was reminded of how, what a miracle birth really is. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, and, and I don't know why anybody in here wouldn't know it, uh, but I am not a cowboy. Wednesday, we, uh, we, uh, Tuesday afternoon, we, we checked the cows, and, and I noticed one, uh, it was staying off by itself. I knew that it was about to deliver a calf. I, I knew that, uh, that I needed to keep an eye on it. So Wednesday, I get up, and I go out, and we uh, uh, take a check on this cow, and uh, this cow is, is in trouble. Uh, she's having a breached birth. And any of you that don't know what that is, the calf is turned backwards. It can't come out. It's impossible for the mama cow to push that calf out in a breached position. Well, we, we take and I, by some miracle of heaven after about 45 minutes of walking through briar patches because that thing decided that we didn't like briar patches so it was fine with them. I finally get a rope around that thing's neck, run it around a tree, and I've got my two cowgirls back there that was holding the cow around the tree while I tried to deliver this calf that at this point was already dead because I knew that the mama cow would in turn die if she couldn't get the calf out of her. So I, I, I go into, and, and I become doctor, veterinarian, John Mays, and, 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 and we start to deliver that calf. And anyway, long story short, we get the calf out, and the calf is, is like I said, it was already dead. Uh, and, and Karen said to me, she said, boy, isn't it a miracle that anything ever gets born? And I said to her, you know, it absolutely really is a miracle. She said those words to me, and they, and they kind of sat down in my spirit and sat down in my soul. And I thought, you know what? It's a miracle that any of us are here. And it's a miracle that any of us are able to function as human beings to have the ability to walk, to have the ability to talk, to have the ability to raise our hands, and to have the ability to, to just be here and to breathe breath in our bodies. And we never think about the miracle of what that next breath really is. I, we don't stop and, and, and think about that. But tonight I want to share with you that it's a wonder. It's, a, it's awe-inspiring to think that God created created us and because he created us he was able to form us in the perfect way so we could have functionality so we could have a, a mentality so we could think about things and we have the the ability to reason together 
right? So it's, it's a wonder uh, when we think about man and we think about that the Bible says that God took man and, and he created him of the dust of the earth. And then the Bible says he breathed into his nostrils and, and man became a living soul. In the, in the Jewish culture uh, today, if you begin to uh, uh, take apart what they believe about creation, they would say in, in, that Genesis 2 verse 7 says that's when God made the dust to dance. That's when God made the dust to dance. Tonight, I'm going to tell you something. It's a thousand wonders that any, anybody's even sitting here. You have the ability to understand me, and all you are is dust. Amen. Amen. The wonder of man is that man was created by God and, 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 and was breathed into him uh, the breath from God. The, the ruach of God was breathed into his nostrils. And the Bible says that from that point, man became a living soul. Man was created, and it's nothing short of a miracle. It, you know, we, we get to thinking about... Uh, the the complexity of the human body and, and like I described to you about your toe but stumping your toe and your whole body hurts here here's the thing H have you ever met somebody you know they've got they've got uh, a, a medical issue and they don't really know what it is I've met several people like that uh, they, they, the doctors have searched and can't find what the issue is. There, there's no doubt there's an issue there, but the, but the complexity of the human body and, and the amount of things, that, that the, the connections that are being made inside the brain system, inside the nervous system, there's something going on that they just cannot describe. It's a miracle that any of us are here. It's a miracle that any of us are healthy. Tonight, if you're healthy... And you've had and you've enjoyed the health in during 2020. You ought to praise God tonight. Amen. Amen. Why don't we just give him a hand clap tonight? Amen. <laughs> that that we we we're, we're healthy. Wow, what a wonder. What a wonder it is that, that, that he has created us and, and, and that, that we have the abilities that we do have tonight. It, you see the wonder of man. And in, in, in the following verse, in verse 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, verse 28, chapter 1, uh, uh, Replenish, let's see, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living creature that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every, every herb uh, bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, every tree in which the fruit of the tree yielding her seed, to you it shall be for meat." And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given you, uh, given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. During the creation, you have the wonder of man. And, and uh, I read to you this, this, uh, these three or four verses here from 28 down to 31 uh, to, to, for you to understand this, that there was a work of man. There was a work of man. They, you, in other words, you were created for a purpose. You were created for a purpose. You said, Brother John, where did you get that? The Bible says that you're to have dominion over the fishes, the sea, the fowl, the air, and every, creep, every uh, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's what the Bible says. Well, there's dominion. And then it, it, it also, it goes on. He said, I've given you, in verse 29, every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree which is uh, fruit of the tree, yielding, sir, it shall be meat for you. So they had the work. The, the purpose of their life was to have dominion, and the work of their life was to gather their food. Amen. Amen. I, I know I know that I'm not I'm I'm not crazy, but I've heard preachers say that well work didn't come in till after sin. Bull. You 
Adam was not created, listen to me, Adam was not created to just sit down in the lap of luxury and have God bring him everything that he needed. God had already provided everything that, that Adam needed to in order to survive, everything that he needed to live. But it was up to Adam to go out to the tree and pick the fruit from the tree so that way he could have food on his table. Now, y'all, I'm going to say something to you tonight, and you may like it and you may not like it, but that, that, that principle is no different than it, than it, today than what it was then. If you don't work, you don't eat. Amen. Amen. It, nobody, listen to me tonight, and the wonder of man, the wonder of human being is, the, it, it is amazing. But here's the thing. You have a personal responsibility to get up every day and do the work that God has provided for you to take from the tree that he's provided for you to eat from. Amen? He's given us the ability. Nobody don't owe you nothing. Amen? And these entitlement programs, I get so sick and tired of listening about entitlements, like they're entitled to something. No, you're not. You know what any human being would, would have, if we really got what we deserved, we'd have hell. Amen? If we really got what we deserved, we'd starve to death because we're too sorry to go out and get it ourselves. Amen? I'm telling you that, that man was ordained for work. Not only do you take these scriptures, for instance, here, but you, you turn with me to uh, chapter 2, verse 15, and the Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the midst of the garden to dress it and to keep it. This is, way, this is a whole chapter prior to man falling into sin. God placed Adam in the center of the Garden of Eden, and he, he said he was put there to dress it and to keep it. He had work was there. There was work to keep, uh, to keep man's hands busy. What does the Bible say? Uh, 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 not, not the Bible, but the old wives' tale. I, I've heard it said, the idle hands is what? Exactly. Men are supposed to stay busy. They're supposed to be working. You've got the wonder of man, then you've got the work of man. And you say, Brother John, what, what are you drawing? How, how can we pull from that in the year 2020, about to go into a brand new year? How can we draw from, from this, this scripture and say, hey, let's make this applicable to us today. Here it is, y'all, is that you were created, amen, amen. for a purpose. Amen. You were created for a work. Do you know that you were created to do something that only you could do? Amen. You were created for a purpose. You were created for a work. And I'm saying this to everybody in here tonight, uh, that, that you don't have to fulfill the, the, what, the purpose that you were created for, but that does not mean that you weren't created for a purpose. Amen? Amen? There's more to life than sitting down and just waiting on see what the government's going to send you to or, waiting, or sitting back and saying, well, I've not been lucky and I've been unfortunate and I've been all of these things. It, there's more to life than that. Amen. 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 Let me just jump out here and say something else. We need more, more preaching on that. Amen. We do. We need a, a generation to understand that, that, that they're coming up behind us and, and, and to understand that, you know what, you got to work for, for what you get and, and you're not entitled to anything. And, and, and it's, it's just absolutely amazing to me that kids, and I'm not talking about our kids, but y'all might can get something from this, but to think that kids, uh, they've been raised a certain way, they've been raised in a household, and, and they want to start out where their mama and daddy, it took them 50 years to get. Amen. Something wrong with that picture. Amen. Something's bad wrong with that picture. But you were created for a work. You were created by God for a purpose. And, and tonight, it, that's no different. In the last Sunday night of year 2020, you were created for a purpose. You have the wonder of man. You have the work of man. And then you look down, and, and, and you'll, you'll understand where I'm going. In Genesis chapter 3, you turn over a couple of pages to Genesis chapter 3, and then you have the will of man. 
something. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 6, and I, I read part of this this morning. The Bible says, When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to be to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they, they knew that they were naked, and they sw sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Uh, tonight you see the will of man. Do you see the will of man? You have been, you, you, you've got, there's wonder about you because you've been created for a purpose. There's work about you because you have a purpose uh, for which you were created. But then you see the will of man uh, here, and you see the will of man being exercised. They had one commandment. They had one thing uh, that, that God had told them, don't eat of that tree. Don't eat it. They, they had one rule to keep, and they couldn't even keep it. And uh, I was sitting in, in class one night with some teenagers uh, uh, at Mountain View, and, and, and uh, they said, uh, why couldn't they just kept that one thing, and then we could all be all, we'd, everything would be all right, and sin wouldn't have entered into the world. I said, if they hadn't have broke the rule, you would have. Amen. 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 It's, it's human nature. God give us a free will when he created us. When we became that dust that began to dance and he breathed into our nostrils, it says, let us make man in our image. Well, part of the image of God is having the ability to decide. Okay? So you see the will of man. You see the wonder of man, the work of man, and then the will of man. It's no different than it is then than it, was, than it is today. Everybody sitting here tonight, there's wonder about you. There's work for you to do, but you have a free will. Sad thing about it is, is this, is most of the time when we have a choice, we choose to go against God. We're no different than what Adam and Eve were. Most of the time when there's a choice involved and we have the choice, we choose to go against God. You say, but Brother John, we're fallen and, and we're living in a fallen world and so is that not natural? Absolutely it's natural. It's absolutely natural. But we're supposed to be peculiar. We're supposed to be different. Amen. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. Right. Amen. So what comes naturally to us, we should say, mm, that's no good. Tonight, I'm going to choose to follow God. See, the will of man is, is, is something that, that I'm, I'm, this, we're in a deep subject right here. We're in something that, that's way over our heads because you stop and you think about this. You have these, these, these philosophies and these doctrines out there that, that say that the will of man uh, uh, does not matter. It's that God is sovereign and he saves who he wants to and man has nothing to do with that. I don't believe that. I believe that's the doctrine of a devil. I believe that the Bible teaches us from the book of uh, from Genesis chapter three that man has a free will, that that man can choose to go against God, and that man oftentimes chooses to go against God, and that's what, what becomes natural to us. That's what comes natural, and we say, uh, uh, "Well, I'm just like everybody else, and I'm choosing not to go with God." But you know what? Later on in my life, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to do better. When is later on in your life going to be? Amen. Yep. Amen. When is that going to be? Tonight, as you sit here on the last Sunday night of, of 2020, and I know it's, for, it, it's been a rough year. It's been rough. I mean, let's just be honest, okay? It's been, God's been good. But the year's been rough. 
But you have a will. And you can choose to go with God. Or you can choose to go against God. You can choose to trust God or you can refuse to trust God. And that choice is yours. The person sitting to your left and to your right can't make that choice for you. You must make that choice for yourself. As we examine in Genesis, we think about the wonder of man. Why? Why did God create us? He did it for a purpose. We, we think, why did he give us free will? Why could not he just have made us to choose him? That ain't how God operates. He wants you to want to serve him. He wants you to want to love him. Because if he could force you, You'd be nothing more than a robot. Amen. Amen. He don't want no robot. He created you specifically for a purpose. And you say, Brother John, I don't know what my purpose is. Y'all listen to me tonight. You've got a purpose. Amen. You've got a purpose. You've got a reason for being here. Or else you'd be gone. Let's find our purpose. Let's choose tonight to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to follow God with everything I got in this new year. I don't know what this new year is going to bring. Amen. Political unrest, social unrest, a different strand of a pestilence. I don't know. But I know God's still on the throne tonight. Amen. And I know that his people still have a choice tonight. Yes, sir. I asked this question. You were created tonight for a purpose with an option. And I ask you this question. What option are you going to choose? Are you going to be like Adam and Eve and go against God? Or are you going to say, you know what? Enough's enough. I'm going to surrender to hit my will to his will. Because really and truly, church, listen. I don't want what I want anymore. You say, Brother John, what do you mean? I don't want what I want. I want what he wants. Amen. I want what he wants. And, and y'all, there's a lot of freedom in that. There's a whole lot of freedom in that. You know who the Bible says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But when, but when you get set free and you start surrendering your will to God's will and you stop wanting what you want and you start wanting what he wants, then you say, God, what do I want? Amen. I want you, your will to be done in my life. I want you to be glorified in my life. It does not matter to me if I make a million dollars a year or if I don't barely have enough to get by on. It doesn't matter to me because I want what you want, God. I want your will for my life. How many of you tonight will choose that? How many of you tonight will choose to say, I'm going to walk into 2021 and I'm going to forget what I want and worry about what he wants. Y'all bow, bow with me tonight. Go ahead and get us a song ready, Brother John. Father, Lord, I have done my best to convey the message that I feel like you've laid on our heart for this last Sunday night of 2021 or 2020. And as we look to 2021, we look to a new year.
Father, I, I can't answer for anybody else in this place. I want to praise you tonight for my health. I stand in awe. I stand in wonder that you ever made me. I'm thankful tonight for that. I'm thankful tonight for the purpose in which you've created me for. And Father, I, like I said, I can't answer for anybody else in this place. Not my wife, not my kids, not the church members here. But God, I surrender my will to you tonight. You've given me the option. Father, I'm choosing to trust you. Father, I'm choosing to trust you as we walk into a new year. We walk out of one that wasn't so good, it doesn't seem like. But I'm choosing, God, tonight to surrender my will to yours. I don't want what I want. I want, God, what you want. And Father, tonight I ask you to have your will and your way as all across this house folks are making their choices. Father, I pray, God, that some would surrender tonight. I, I pray that others that have already surrendered, Father, would reaffirm to you that they want what you want. But God, each one of us have that will. And there may be somebody here tonight that's lost. God, that's not your will for anybody's life. Woo them, draw them with your Holy Spirit. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. Amen. Go ahead and let a song play, Brother John. Y'all stand to your feet. These altars are open. If you want to end this year... In, in the last Sunday of 2020 in the altar, do that. If you got something to surrender, if you got your will to surrender tonight, do that tonight. Let him have his way. Shame, the empty places where I've worn.